Hi everybody, uh, just welcome you to another episode of the Robertson Fan Art Vlogs. Uh, this week we're going to be discussing Robertson Fan Art, where we started, where we've been, potentially where we're going. So we were set up as a family business by my mother, Senga, um, back in 1986 in the shopping centre, uh, the postings in Kirkcaldy. Now my mother opened up that shop basically as a, a framing, um, a framer, a picture framers, and she sold uh, other bits, including flowers, vases, uh, but predominantly the business was framing of posters. Um, you used to come in and you had like the catalogue and you could sit and look through the catalogue and then my mother would help you select your frames and uh, she would go back uh, in the evenings and frame everything up in my granddad's garage. Um, I believe at the time she was also doing the Kinross Market. For those of you in Central Scotland who will remember that, it was a it was a very very busy marketplace back in the eighties, and that was uh, that was Singer's old stomping ground. So throughout the eighties and the nineties, my mother uh, had her shop in Postings. She also had a premises in Leslie, uh, which was about 10, 15 miles down the road. Um, she had some fantastic uh, events there with the likes of Graham Illingworth and Gordon King, uh, who some of you might remember. Uh, this was the start of my mother kind of getting into more collectible uh, limit editions and originals uh, by some quite well-known artists um, and has really kind of given our family name that kind of provenance within Fife as to be in the main place to come and buy your, buy your collectible artwork. Now, at some point during the 90s, my mother uh, realised that the, the shopping centre that she was in in Kirkcaldy um, was slowing down a little bit, so she actually relocated to the Kingdom Centre in Glenrothes, where we were based for, I believe, 25 years, um, maybe slightly less than that. Um, I, would need to say, I should have really double-checked with her before this. But we were there for a fair length of time, and by which point we had taken on a guild commended framer um, called Sam. And now Sam has been working with us now, again, I think best part of 15 years. He's uh, He's been around a long, long time. He's kind of in with the brickwork as our Sam. So Sam is the one responsible for framing pretty much everything that comes into the galleries. Now there's some originals that come from the artists framed, but predominantly we do tend to insist that works arrived either mounted or canvas only because we, we're fully confident in Sam's ability to put out a, a, a quality product um, and we like to have our own quality control when uh, things leave us. So uh, through the mid 2000s we had um, obviously a bit of a financial crisis for those of you who were in business or remember 2008 that was a bit of a worrying time for all of us. Um, 2008 was uh, really tough for us in particular um, and over the subsequent couple of years we took a bit of a hit as a business um, at which point we did decide to move out of the shopping centre uh, due to huge rents and we took a unit in an old warehouse um, actually down at Eastfield, what was industrial estate, it is now a business park. Um, well, I'll get onto that in a bit. But we took on the shell of a warehouse and uh, went to town trying to fit it out and make it. I always like to think if it was in London, it would be one of the coolest, trendiest galleries. Um, however, an industrial state in Glenrothes doesn't have quite the same ring as Shoreditch. Um, but I think now that we have been there a number of years, um, we've become a real kind of cornerstone in the community in Glenrothes. I hope a lot of you will agree especially now with the addition of the, the Art Cafe, which has proven to be incredibly popular, um, winning Best Cafe in Fife uh, in 2019, 2018, 2019. Again, should have checked. So that was around about the time that I came into things. I'd um, basically been at university and wasn't really for me. Probably enjoyed the university lifestyle a little bit too much. So I'd come back and help my mum um, in the recession uh, in exchange for some free digs. Um, and long story short, I loved the business, loved the artwork. I'd grown up with the artists through the years, so I knew a lot of them personally. Um, and I have since stuck around. And 
So after a couple of years where we decided that I was going to be part of the company, um, we actually got the opportunity of buying a building through in Dollar, um, which is where I, I actually went to school. And my mother had always joked that this shop in particular would make a fantastic gallery because um, it had fantastic big windows, big frontage. And lo and behold, it came up for sale. Um, so I actually went to school with the chap whose father owned the building. It was the old school outfitters. And we did a bit of negotiating. We managed to secure the building. Um, and again, we had a real, really big fit out on our hands. I think that place had uh, uh, last been fitted out probably in the 60s or 70s. Um, it was, it was really amazing some of the stuff that we found actually when we were ripping it out. There was old signs from when it was a pharmacy way back when. Um, but that became um, kind of uh, my my gallery. My mum was in the office. That was where all our clients were and I was willing to go and uh, run Dollar and see how we could go, how we went. Um, Dollar was a really interesting one because it was the first time we'd actually run a gallery as almost strictly a gallery and um, without having a gift shop and candles and homeware and interiors as well um, and it was something that I thought we probably had to do if we wanted to attract um, some of the big names uh, in contemporary art especially within Scotland um, and it stood to reason that I'd actually been a huge fan of Gerard Burns for a number of years and I had probably pestered him a little bit to try and get his work in. And once we got Dollar up and running, we sent them some photos and I, I begged again. Um, and to be fair to Gerard, he was, uh, he was willing to give us a go and um, see what we could do. And I think we became one of uh, Gerard's biggest selling galleries um, throughout the world for, for a number of years. Um, I mean, we still work very closely with Gerard. We're still very close. I'm, I'm, I'm close friends with Gerard now. Um, and over the past few years, we've not had as much work in, I think, predominantly because Gerard's been so busy with uh, commissions and uh, huge events internationally um, through no fault of either of ours. We, uh, we were planning on doing a show this year, but uh, lo and behold, COVID-19 has put the, the brakes on that one. So we will hopefully touch base soon and try and arrange something for 2021. So as I was saying, Gerard was the first, um, I would say probably the first really big name to to run with us as a gallery, certainly within Scottish uh, contemporary fine art was concerned. Um, and his name has certainly attracted some attention both from collectors and um, has given us some recognition with other artists. Um, so thanks Gerard. So with Dollar proving uh, a popular popular gallery, um, we intended to look slightly closer towards Edinburgh and um, trialled a pop-up space within Dunfermline. Um, now Dunfermline we had for I think about a six month period um, within a, a furniture store. Um, and whilst we found the clients in Dunfermline were proving, a good, were proving that they had a good reaction to the work, a lot of them, from what we could gather, were spending their weekends in Edinburgh shopping. Um, so we, we, we then began to look um, for a unit in Edinburgh. It took us a couple of years to find exactly what we wanted in a location that was um, as close to city centre as realistically an independent family-run business could afford to be. Um, and we kind of stretched ourselves a little bit to get this space. Um, we took it on. There are some photos being shown just now of the, the state of the building when we moved in. It doesn't look too bad, but when we moved in, we had to restrap all the walls, brand new plasterboard, entirely new lighting, hanging system, alarm system, phone lines, etc. It was it was extensive, to say the least. Um, but here we are, this is Edinburgh. Um, we've had fantastic reactions from Edinburgh-based clients based on the gallery and how it looks, how the work's displayed. We, um, this is another one where it is solely art um, and sculpture. Now that we've been in Edinburgh four and a half years, um, we've certainly, I think, made a, a good name for ourselves um, as one of the, certainly the premier galleries uh, selling modern contemporary streets art sometimes as well. Um, certainly digital art is 
I think there's there's no one really competing with us, especially in Scotland. We've got some of the biggest names uh, going as far as that's concerned. Since opening Edinburgh, we've put on um, big solo shows. We had a solo show for um, Jack Vitriano, a retrospective exhibition um, off the back of his Kelvin Grove um, show that was that was launched. We had a, a follow up about a year later, predominantly with Sign Limited Editions, which was very, very popular with our customers. We've also invited up from London people like JJ Adams, and um, we've had Katie J. Dobson come up from Lincoln. Um, all these shows have proven incredi incredibly popular with footfall being almost uncontrollable, um, with especially with like, I mean, Katie Jade, we, we have the gallery is full uh, every show. With JJ, the queue is up and around the corner, halfway down, halfway up Thistle Street. Um, Jack Vecchiano, the footfall, we, we only anticipated running that show for two weeks. It was so popular, it ran for a month, because um, the gallery was just so busy. We then saw a gap in the market within our branch in Fife, um, where we were, we were realising that a lot of people were coming into the gallery, seeing things that they liked, and were going home to have a cup of tea and have a wee think. Now, we thought if we could maybe have the tea and the coffee here, we could help them sit and have a think nearby. We also realised that there wasn't that many nice places to go for a lunch or just a cuppa. So we, we opened the Art Cafe. Um, I think that's now about four or five years now we've had the cafe. And since the cafe has expanded immensely, we've now got about 60 seats. Um, we are, well, before COVID, we were full every Friday, Saturday. Um, amazing support from the locals uh, throughout Fife, people travelling fairly large distances to come to the gallery. Um, even clients from Aberdeen were justifying the road trip down to come and have a look around the gallery, have a bite of a bite to eat for lunch, uh, a cup of coffee, and browse again and see uh, what there is. Um, so it's nice for us to be able to have that facility to welcome clients from further afield as well, where it makes it a bit more of a day out, I think. Now, obviously, throughout all of these uh, galleries, expansions, diversifications, there's been there's been trials and tribulations. We have done, we've taken part in many, many art fairs, home shows, grand designs um, all over the country. And we found now, I think, that these shows are incredibly important to us to get ourselves out there because we're not... We're not a typical gallery. We're very, very accommodating. We're very approachable. We're not, we're not selling to the elite as such. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. We can sell. We've got artists that sell paintings all the way up to three hundred thousand, half a million, etc. Um, but for us, it's all about being as appealing as possible to everybody. So I mean, we sell limited editions from ever from a hundred pounds all the way up to some of these huge, huge names. And I think it's very important to be able to offer that to customers. There's no point in us being a business, I don't think, and appealing to the 1%. I think what we need to do is make sure that there's people getting into art and bringing it to people and let them feel comfortable to come into the gallery. Now there's, there's plenty of people in this world who are very successful in their own right, but don't necessarily want to walk into a gallery and feel like they don't know what they're talking about. I've always thought that's, that's not a reason not to come in. That's what we're here for. Um, you come in, you see what you like. If you want a little bit of information, that's what, that's what we're here to provide. Um, and from that, our, our relationships with our clients really grow. Whether you can come in or not, whether you're down in London, whether you're abroad, wherever you are, we, can, we work with you very, very closely. And it's a relationship at the end of the day. We want to look after you because if we sell you something once and it's a bad experience, you're not coming back. Um, and for me, that's it's just terrible business. So we we do really pride ourselves on customer care. And I know COVID-19 has been very difficult for, for us, certainly to manage client expectations with deliveries and turnaround times. And I think because we've got that close relationship with our customers, there's, there's not really been much of an issue. There's been a couple of customers who have waited a long time and we've tried to keep in touch as best we can. And it's not, it's not always possible. That we are very conscious of uh, the turnaround times that can, can be expected when it comes to art. And because of the nature of the 
couriers that we use, they're all specialists. They can take a week to get something from one place to another. So if it's coming from the artist studio to the agent to then get approved, to then come to us, to then get framed, to then go to you, there is a period um, that, that people can have to wait. And I think we need to, we, we just do make sure that people know what to expect uh, where that's concerned. Now, as COVID-19 unfolded, we realized very quickly that retail is never going to be the same again. Um, we have focused uh, very heavily on our social media content, this being a key example, um, to bring the galleries to you and make sure that you feel connected to us as a brand um, and we're not just a faceless company. We want to make sure that our customers are, are buying from people. Um, I think that's very important. So as far as where the company's going the next five years, I don't know. I don't know where uh, where the economy is going to go. I think certainly online is going to be very, very important. So we will continue to work closely with everybody and keep videos like this coming. Um, now, if there's anything you want to see from us um, in these videos, if you want to meet the team, if you want to know anything, if you want to know art as an investment, potentially, and um, we're thinking about putting a video like that out, obviously that is a very, a very difficult subject um, and there is no promises as far as investments are concerned but um, I think that's something we'll maybe touch on. Um, so yeah, let us know your thoughts. So this has given you a little bit of an insight as to where we've come from, how we started and how we've, de how we've developed as a company. Um, I thank you once again for watching our videos and if there's anything you want to see in the future, as I say, just please do let us know. Cheers. Bye.